Detroit, 1908. Henry Ford, maverick, visionary, obsessive. Nobody's figured out how to make a car that's cost efficient to produce and affordable to buy. Henry Ford is about to change that. Back in Detroit, Henry Ford wondered how he could bring the price of the Model T down to where everybody could buy it. He figured that the more cars he made and sold, the cheaper he could sell each one. There were dozens and dozens of small companies building cars that were essentially playthings for the rich. They were notoriously unreliable. They were um, not standardized. They were hand-built, essentially. And if you were going to own a car, you practically had to have your own mechanic on staff as well to keep the thing running. But the battle against wasted time and wasted effort was being won. The cars began coming off the assembly line at the rate of one every 40 seconds. And what Henry Ford had foreseen happened. Mass production and the assembly line drove the price of the Model T down from $850 to $300. Now everybody could have one. Cars. By the 1920s, are transforming the lives of millions. Now you don't have to live near work. Cars create giant suburbs. What Henry Ford developed was the car for the common man. One day, he had an idea. Given a little wear and tear, and having the practical repair skills of a mechanic, he knew most of these cars were perfectly resaleable. If he could make it work, he could open up an entirely new and much larger market for affordable used cars to the majority of the people in the town. Over time, cars became a necessity. It seemed that everyone needed to have one in order to get to work. With increasing demand came improved manufacturing and modern cars just kept getting better and better. With more big factory bonuses from Ford, your Ford dealer can give you even more. His used car business had facilitated a sharing of prosperity offered by a car that seemed to flow right through the community to some of its very youngest members. But there was a consequence that had developed as all cars became more modern and expensive. Because everyone needed a car and the market for reselling a used car was much more certain, people became more confident in taking on larger and larger car loans. He soon discovered he could influence the sales price of cars and push them up by reducing the number of cars for sale in his car yard. So then, what does it mean for society when scarcity, either produced naturally or through manipulation, is a beneficial condition for industry? He started to let financial demand compete with practical demand. This obviously increased the demand for all small hatchbacks, which is why he needed to give first car buyers a cash grant to help them afford their first car. He could have refused to sell old hatchbacks to investors and increase the supply for first car buyers, but this of course meant he wouldn't achieve their highest possible price. So the use of a first car buyer grant meant the salesman could have his cake and eat it too. By this stage, however, the used car market as a whole had become very convoluted, complicated, and in some cases, downright silly. It seemed car owners were much less certain where the value of their car actually stood at this time. They had felt much more confident about their car's price when there was plenty of turnover in the market that acted as proof to them. The whole idea of a luxury hatchback was a bit of an oxymoron really. The banker too was concerned about the possibility of falling car prices. Potential first home buyers were seeing proof there wasn't a shortage of property for sale, just a shortage of property at an affordable price. The salesman had essentially gone from an industrial capitalist to more of a financial capitalist. Something is always happening, but when it happens, people don't always see it. 
or understand it or accept it. The system has to fail. The system has to fail. Has to fail. Oh, thank God.